TB Photo X1.5 TFX and welcome back to another video. And first of all, before we get into this uh, episode, I just want to extend a warm thank you so very much for 150 subscribers. Yeah, I didn't think I'll... <laughs> it's hard to believe actually. Uh, I know it's no record amount, but anyway, for everybody out there that is subscribing and watching these videos, Really, thank you very much. Um, yeah, really, thank you. <clears throat> but anyway, we're gonna start now with this. Uh, we can call it the 150 special with looking at a couple of 135 lenses. <clears throat> yeah, uh, but anyway, this is gonna be the introduction to a kind of a little bit of a shootout among some uh, lenses here. I have a few, you know, I can take this uh, what is it? Tokina out of its little bag. So we can see all of them. Uh, there we go. But anyway, I'm gonna upload a couple of videos now uh, about these four 135 lenses that are very affordable. And um, uh, yeah, you'll see for yourself what you think about the quality of the images that uh, they produce. But anyway, we'll start, uh, we'll start with a little bit of an overview of these lenses and uh, yeah, we'll see a little bit of uh, what they can do. But first off, we have the Tokina RMC 135mm uh, f2.8 from Japan. It's a made in Japan lens by Tokina. It has the Nikon F uh, mount. It's the AI version. Uh, this uh, is uh, yeah Nikon AI. It has the minimum aperture of f22. Uh, it has automatic aperture control, uh, it is six aperture blades, and the minimum focus distance is, as we can see on the lens and so on on my cheat sheet, uh, one and a half meter. It takes a 52 millimeter filter thread, and uh, it has a built-in lens hood, which is a little bit of an X factor. Next up, <clears throat> via Comi, it's the Vivitar uh, telephoto 135 f 2.8 this is also 2.8 so we can see now if all 2.8s are uh, uh, the same but anyway also this is very similar to the uh, Tokina in that it, this is also a uh, two point uh, or rather a, a minimum aperture of 22 it is automatic aperture it's also six aperture blades but a little bit uh, uh, longer uh, minimum uh, focusing distance, uh, distance instead of 1.5 meters, which is the case with the Tokina, this one is 1.5 for the Tokina and 1.8 meters for the Vivitar. <clears throat> yeah, uh, and uh, while the Tokina was a 52 millimeter filter thread, the Vivitar is a 55 millimeter. Uh, filter thread. So I think that the previous owner has done a little bit of a <clears throat> uh, you know temporary job on the front cover for this lens. It's basically a step up ring uh, with a press fitted Vivitar uh, cover on it. So yeah, but it works. It's a little bit of a hobo uh, way of you know doing it but it works and this also has a built-in metal lens hood and this was supposed to be a three-way a three-way race but uh, yeah we'll get to that in a little bit of in a, in a second but anyway fourth and what was supposed to be the final uh, is this one uh, from the Soviet Union made by Coms. It's the Jupiter 37A. This uh, lens is different from the other two previous that I've talked about in that this one does not have a Nikon bayonet, F-type bayonet as standard. Instead, this has the M42 screw mount as standard, but on it I have a uh, Nikon to M42 uh, converter with, uh, you know, with optics in the converter that will you know uh, compensate for the uh, the different flange distance yeah 
and the, this one also has a maximum of 22 uh, f you know minimum aperture of 22 uh, it's fully manual so you have to stop down the f-stop yourself and your, your viewfinder will become darker uh, but this is a little bit of the wild card because this has uh, not six but 12 twice as many aperture blades it has a minimum focus distance of uh, 1.2 meters so this can go closer than the two others uh, and it is still a, a 52 millimeter filter thread and the x factor for this since it's a 12 blade aperture design uh, chances are this might have a little bit of a different type of bokeh at fully open or for video it might also give some nice effects we'll see and uh, as a bonus for the Vivitar, before we move on to the wild card, uh, the Vivitar actually, I got a little bit of a box with some miscellaneous old photo gear. And in that box, I found something a little bit interesting. This thing you can see you can focus this as well. What this is, is a Hoya adapter. A Hoya zoom close-up lens made in Japan. Well, what this basically is, if I have understood it correctly, is kind of a macro lens attachment that you actually, and this is a little bit cool, you have the Vivitar here and There you go. This is actually a combo where you can actually make sort of a macro lens out of any other lens. And it's a little bit of a interesting old school thing from Hoya, or Hoya, as uh, Todd Wolf would say. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that might be a little bit of an X factor for the Vivitar. I also have a, a picture taken with that combo with a D7200 the Vivitar 135 and this <laughs> Hoya close-up zoom. <laughs> I'll put it up here a little bit. Uh, a little bit of an action figure uh, that uh, became the model of it. But now, <clears throat> here's the wild card. Like the Jupiter, this is also an M42 lens. I was at a local flea market a couple of days ago and this was out for 95 Swedish kroner. So it basically didn't cost me anything. And I think I'll just throw it in there as a wild card. Uh, this one didn't come with any, uh, you know, any type of uh, shield, you know, front or back covers. Instead, uh, as a front cover, it's this expert skylight 55 millimeter. And what lens is it? Well, it's a Pentacon lens. This is the Pentacon Auto 2.8 uh, 135 MC. And on the back here it says German Democratic Republic. So this is a DDR lens. Uh, and because this is supposed to be manual or automatic with an M45 camera, which means that I can use this Pentacon or some, on something like my Zenit TTL or the Practica Super TL. So th this will work, these two will work with those cameras. But um, it, if you look at it, it has the minimum aperture of 22, maximum of 2.8. And uh, when you look at the range here, it says uh, minimum focus distance uh, 1.8 meters. So you have now a range of uh, different cameras, or not different cameras, but different uh, lenses that will uh, do a pretty, pretty decent job. So anyway, <clears throat> these lenses all can be had for about, you know, well under 1200 Swedish. So, you know, well under, you know, 100 pounds, euros or dollars, you, you know, they can be 
had fairly cheaply. So, uh, in other words, we'll use the D7200, which I know is an APS-C sensor camera. So, instead of these being uh, 135 millimeter, they will be closer to, a hun uh, to 202 millimeters. But since 200 millimeters is a uh, common focus length to use with uh, prime lenses, I think we will manage. But anyway, uh, yeah, this is just an introduction to the contenders, and uh, we'll see in the next video. I think we will start with the uh, Tokina, actually. Uh, yeah, but anyway. Anyway, this is Tobias Bergstrom from TB Photo X 1.5 to FX. I would like to thank you once again for watching. Uh, thank you for 150 subscribers. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video when we are going to take on this little uh, lens shootout. So anyway, thank you for watching. Bye.